Hey there viewers, welcome back to Scanner Danner Premium. This is Mario Rojas from Super Mario Diagnostics and this will be the first ever video that I submit to the Scanner Danner uh, Premium content. Hopefully it makes the grade because, uh, well, I've never really done this before. So well, let's get right into it. Uh, full disclosure, I'm already kind of into the Diag. I'm gonna show some videos of where I started. The vehicle came in uh, with a concern of no activity absolutely nothing on the dash nothing the hazard lights did work and all that and uh, the wiper blades would be non-stop so and the brake lights would stay on at all times i'm going to put up a video of the first thing that i did was a pre-scan uh, i'm going to go ahead and show you guys the pre-scan that i initially got and first thing i did was test the key using the diagnostic box Scanning for the RFID chip on this, which the coil in the vehicle uses to turn on the vehicle, and nothing's coming up. Something may be wrong with this key, it looks like it. As you can see in that video, that key was unresponsive. And somebody had been here before me. Somebody had already tried opening that key and doing something with it. I don't know what they were trying to do. I went ahead and opened up that key. Once again, it was already open. And I found three traces broken. And I figured, why not? Super quick fix. Five minutes later, we uh, got those three traces fixed. And in the next video, you can see the result. After repairs. So now that with a working key, <clears throat> that's where I'm at right now. So I'm gonna remove this key. By the way, we are working on a 2011 BMW 328i. And I've, obviously this key, I put it back together, glued it back together. It, does, it looks shady, of course, yes. But I wanna get answers. So we will recommend a new key as well. But for now, since we're trying to get answers, uh, I'm just gonna stick with this. So we're gonna stick our key into the dash and now we do see activity. We have our cluster come on and then when I hit the brake pedal, nothing happens, it just cycles off. So, and our wipers stop operating. So I'm gonna put a key on and I wanna show you guys the pre-scan. So this is our pre-scan, right? Well, one of the things I like about the topology view on this thing is that you can see what's not communicating, right? There's a lot of things not communicating here. We got no comms with the TCU or TCM, whatever. You, I guess that's the telematics control unit. So the TCM is not communicating. The EKPS, which is the fuel pump control module, is not communicating. And our DSC ABS module is not communicating. So that's not good for us. There's no wonder it won't crank because it won't see whether it is in park or neutral. I wanna find out what's going on on the powertrain can. Why is it not communicating? Obviously, our powertrain bus is not down because we can speak to the ECM unless there's another way for the OBD to have a connection to the ECM or the DME. So we've got our relay right up here in that corner. I'm gonna remove it and see if it clicks. and we got no clicking. So we've got our power probe here. We're gonna carefully front probe it and we've got power on that. So that power is good. We're going to the other side. <laughs> and we got power on both sides. So either the diagram lied to us or there's a short to power on there. <laughs> We're gonna give it power. Let's go to 40 amps. And our glove box light just turned on. Our wipers just turned off right there. And I'm gonna try to start this thing and see what happens. Hmm, still won't start, that's not good. This is the lower pin of the coil command relay, to the relay that we were testing, Terminal 30G, right? We're gonna follow that trace and I'm going to show you guys where we are with that, right? Right, we're going up here. This is something that I already repaired a bit. This was a hot spot that I had found. All right, let's keep going. This was another hot spot that I found. It has solder mask all over it. And this is our full open circuit. You can see our full open circuit right here. Looks like we got ourselves a solid connection here. 
I can see that my transmission is on. Let's go ahead and do a key on. Key is on. Everything's still looking good. We're gonna give this the test of time, see how long it lasts before doing anything at all because it could very well fail. We'll give it time and see what happens. Uh, this could very well be a design flaw. We've seen that happen, so. I know most shops won't wanna hear this, but here, <laughs> When we do stuff like this, we let the customer know we're obviously trying to save them some money. So we make it plain that as a result of trying to save them money, we're, yes, we're doing something a little experimental, but there is always that possibility that it will fail in the future. And if it does, we go ahead and replace it. They're fully aware they're okay with that. We don't go forward until they are fully okay with that. So with that being said, yes, there's a risk. Anytime you do circuit board work, there's a risk involved. You get better at it. It, the risk mitigates. I hope you guys find this useful so far because this may save you in a pinch. That being said, I hope you guys are enjoying this one as much as I am. <sighs> this car just doesn't want to get fixed. What can I say? First is the key, then it's the junction box, then the starter, and now who knows what. This car does not want to get fixed. 